as you know, Kiaya, Fett, and I are huge Star Wars fans, and we're really excited to be starting the week with another great Star Wars book. It's another book in this series written by Calliope Glass, Caitlin Kennedy, and illustrated by Katie Cook. Today, we're going to be sharing Obi One, Two, Three. Let's sit back, relax, and get cozy, because it's story time with Kiyaya and Daniel. Hi, my name is Donnell Carter, certified personal trainer through National Academy of Sports Medicine and certified nutrition coach through Precision Nutrition. I'm here today to talk to you about online personal training, the future of personal training right on your phone. We start the week with an overview and progress reports. Following that, we have our calendar, day three, four, five different workouts. Further in depth, we see exactly what we're doing for the day. Find out more information, contact me. Stories are such an important part of our lives. Join my friend Kiaya and I for Get Cozy, because it's story time with Kiaya and Daniel, where we share some of the greatest picture books and chapters from children's and young adult literature to inspire you to keep embedding literacy into your days. I'm Daniel, and Kiaya and I are here to share this all with you. Welcome to my to an adventure in rhyme and space. One. The Jedi had a legend, an ancient one, of course, that told of a special someone who would bring balance to the Force. Not a handful of chosen somebodies, not a few, not a bunch, not a ton, just a single particular Skywalker, just Anakin, just one. Two. On a desert planet on the outer rim, Tatooine is dusty, gritty, and grim. Everything's parched and thirsty and dry, from the searing earth to the glaring sky. Why, you might ask, you might ask, oh how can this be? Just look up to the sky, and you will soon see. It's those two blasted suns, all round and white hot. They are to blame for this heat. But, oh, what a shot. Three. The galaxy is full of remarkable creatures, amazing, beautiful, and rare. But raftars are just plain awful, despite their obvious flair. These tentacle beasts do only one thing, and that gobble up whatever's in sight. So with three of them now on the loose, Ray and Finn are in for a fight. Four. With his four metal arms all whirling and twirling, General Grievous can fight any foe. This sinister cyborg is feared through the galaxy. He's someone you don't want to know. But even his four spinning sabers of light are no match for Obi-Wan's prowess. In a deadly duel, the Jedi at last puts an end to Grievous's malice. Five. Over the snowy horizon of Hoth, five Imperial walkers appear. They're mechanical monsters, mighty machines, even Wampas notice dear clear. But brave Luke Skywalker has a plan to end these Imperial gimmicks. As it turns out, defeating an At-At just takes a little physics. Ooh. I love the rhyming, Kiaya. Six. The floating cloud city above Bespin 
is home to many a strange creature, including the little Ugnaughts, whose noses are not their best feature. But these six ugly Ugnaughts sure know their stuff, and that is why they've been chosen to perform a key task for the Empire to make sure Han gets frozen. Seven. The Mos Eisley Cantina is not, is not the greatest gig around. The crowd is pretty rowdy, and lost limbs litter the ground. But these seven musicians are just looking to jam, so they'll answer any ad. And when the modal nodes play their cheery tune, the cantina doesn't seem so bad. Eight. Eight little Jawas, all in a pack, excited by their loot. For, for finding treasure on Tatooine is by far no easy pursuit. So they carry it along over the dunes and across the white-hot sand. Don't blame them, that's just what it takes to get by in this desolate land. Nine. Amidala, Queen of Naboo, had nine handmaidens loyal and true. Eight were selected to keep one protected. The queen was disguised as one, two, ten. Imperial officers numbering ten all sat around a big table. There wasn't a lot that could scare those bad men, but that day Darth Vader was able. The Imperial officers didn't agree on the best way to beat the Alliance, so Darth Vader decided to make them all see that he didn't enjoy their defiance. Using his powers, he squeezed one of the ten quickly into submission. His goal was to demonstrate clearly to them that the Force was no ancient religion. Eleven. Eleven X-Wings, led by Poe Dameron, skillfully fly into battle. They're attacking TIE Fighters and the Starkiller base, and the structure is starting to rattle. With one final shot, the Resistance succeeds, and the planet is gone in a flash. But the binding white glow simply lights up the pilot's victorious dash. Twelve. In the days of old, the Jedi stood for all that was noble, strong, and good. Steeped in the Force and wise beyond years, the Jedi quieted everyone's fears. Leading this army of virtuous teachers was the Jedi Council, a wide range of creatures. Twelve individuals of all different species would meet and discuss various treaties. On the last Jedi Council before their great fall sat short little Yoda and Windu, Windu the Tall, and ten of their cleverest brothers and sisters. Alas, they're now only spoken in whispers. Thirteen. Silent giant ships in dust, like ancient mountains standing, Ray weaves her way through all thirteen her sharp eyes always scanning. She's searching for parts to sell or to trade for a day's portion of food. Through X-wings and Y-wings and fallen destroyers, a long-lost multitude. Fourteen. Lumbering, wheezing, huge, and hairy, these fourteen banthas are far from scary. Sure, they are smelly and not very clean, but they're oh so helpful, so who needs hygiene? Fifteen. On Endor's small forest moon, the Ewoks prepare for war. With slingshots and trip lines and possibly landmines, the Empire has no idea what's in store. A group of fifteen takes out its wrath on a slew of white-armored thugs. All on their own, with no help at all, the Ewoks crush them like bugs, not bad for little fur balls. You've got to give them credit, after all, they saved the Rebellion, and the galaxy soon won't forget it. Sixteen. 
a Jedi and a Padawan clutch their weapons tight. They've been training all their lives for this. They're bracing for a fight. Sixteen battle droids attack with heavy blaster fire. But for Obi-Wan and Qui-Gon Jinn, it's not really so dire. Seventeen. Seventeen Gamorrean guards line a hallway in Jabba's palace, tusked and green and horned and mean. They're as gross as Jabba is callous. One thing is for sure, these guys are glad to be guarding this particular aisle. Their friend had a job near the Rancor, but they haven't seen him for a while. Eighteen. The crowds have arrived, Their the stands are packed, they're ready for a show. Eighteen pod racers power up, a gong rings, it, rings out, they're ready to go. Anakin has a faulty start. But then he's off with a blast. Through the desert he zips and he weaves. He's in the lead at last. Not even Sebulba's dirty tricks can keep Anakin's fate at bay. He was always meant to win, you see. The Force is strong with him, they say. Nineteen. Nineteen patrons fill Maz's castle, and w oh, what an interesting mix. Thieves and pirates, smugglers and spies, all visiting for kicks. Just don't step out of line here, folks. Maz Kanata is the judge. She's lived for over a thousand years. You don't want her holding a grudge. Twenty. Stormtroopers travel in packs of twenty, to transport, in transports to be precise. The transports aren't so comfortable, but most stormtroopers aren't so nice. With the heavy ships land, when the heavy ships land, the troopers inside race right into battle, but none of them seem eager to be there. FN-2187 looks a bit rattled. The stormtroopers do as they're told, nineteen of the twenty dive in. But the one who stands apart from it all is the one who soon will be called Finn. Ooh. I like Finn, too. You disappoint me. We're at the end of the book, and not once did you count Dooku. Much to learn you still have. Obi, one, two, three. We hope you've enjoyed this reading as much as we did, but now we've come to the most favorite part of our show. That's right, Kiyaya. Let's get crafty. And today, you're going to get a chance to let us know what your favorite number is, and illustrate it in rhyme with your favorite Star Wars characters. Share your pictures with us on our social media, at Stitching Wolf on Facebook and Instagram, or... Send them to us through email. Get cozy at stitchingwolfdesigns.com. We'll be back again. Be ready. Let's get cozy. Reading is power.